Good means rewind, the gunshot means forward. You requested it, so we rewind. 18 years. Man. <laughs> Where the wow. heck did that go? I swear to God, no, it went somewhere with my hair. It went right <laughs> along with my hair. I'm telling you, that uh, was a series that, that put uh, Toronto basketball on the map. But in that series uh, with the Knicks, Charles Oakley played a big part, if not necessarily on the score sheet. He kind of changed the trajectory of the series of Vince Carter and of the Raptors franchise. Take us back to that. Yeah, I mean... Oak, Oak was our leader. Like, he was the guy that was vocal. He challenged everyone, whether it was ownership, management, coaches, players. He did the dirty things, and he supported us. And he protected guys. For, he protected Vince a lot. Yeah. You know, people trying to hard foul Vince, and, you know, he was the enforcer a lot of times, too. But he challenged Vince in that series, you know, wanting Vince to step up, and that Vince was going to be the guy, and the guy that was going to take the ball for the shots and get the notoriety and all the, you know, fame and everything, mm -hmm. then... He challenged him to play like that. And it was funny because Vince's mom even got into it. So it was kind of like an ongoing battle. Like Vince's mom responded. Yep. I remember him saying, you know, the Outcast song back in the day, sorry, Miss Carter, <laughs> I keeps it real. And it was, it was like the funniest thing in the locker room. So, but Vince responded. And that was our team. Like mm -hmm. we could talk to each other. We could do a lot of things. We could curse at each other. We could fight. We can do everything. And then once we got on that court, we had that support. And our older guys, they really sparked that whole that whole culture for us. Suddenly, you're in to round two with perhaps a path to the finals if you get by these guys. But you had to get by Allen Iverson, who was at the peak of his powers then. What about Iverson game two is what got it started. What do you remember about that day? I remember everything. <laughs> I remember everything. I mean, AI, first of all, he's a beast, man. I played against AI since college at Georgetown and Villanova, you know, so he's always been a tough opponent. And he, this season was his MVP season. I mean, shut man. Nightmares, nightmares still to the day trying to guard that dude. He, he and Chris Charles got into it a little bit. I remember Chris, because Chris Charles was feisty, like real feisty, so Chris would be physical and talk a little. I think Chris called him a <laughs> And I think that sparked a lot of this right here. Do you know AI very well now? Mm -hmm. When you see him, does does that come up? Does that series come up or that game come up very much? Does yeah. it? No, it doesn't. No, no. no. Okay. He's, he's had... I'm not talking about it. Slam him on his head if you want to bring those games up. Yeah. Game three, Vince goes off. And the thing that surprised me the most, and you can tell me if it was something you expected, all the threes that he hit that day, mm -hmm. because he wasn't necessarily, he was the high flyer. He had won the dunk contest. He was spectacular offensive player, but you didn't think of the range like that. And he went off in the first half from beyond the arc. Like, Vince was always the guy, like, he would smile. You know, he wasn't too, you know what I mean? Wasn't, like, serious. He was like, loose, yeah. yeah. He was real loose, and it was just one of those things where Oakley used to always, I think Oakley used to be pissed off about just how he interacted with the other team and his competitors and stuff. But once he got on the court and he started rolling like that, which was most times, like, that's just what it was. But it wasn't anything leading into the game where you can look and say, oh, Vince is ready. Yeah. But you could... Once, once, once stuff like that, he'd make that three, put his head down, or sometimes he would, you know what I mean, put that scowl on his face, then you, then you would know. But he was just feeling it that game. And it was just funny because after game two, when AI gave me 54, or gave us 54, <laughs> I remember bumping into Aaron McKee in the back. And he was like, man, don't worry about it. I grew up with Aaron. He's like, don't worry about it. When he get rolling like that, can't, nobody can do anything. Mm -hmm. Then after game three, I saw Aaron McKee. I was like, don't worry about it, man. <laughs> when he gets rolling like that. Yeah. So we're going back and forth, sharing out, licking our wounds. But it was it was, it was was a crazy time from game two and game three, just that, you know what I mean, that type of going back and forth. There was a real connection with these teams, and it happened pretty quick. It didn't just arrive the day you guys played them to open this playoff series. It's something that had been brewing for a while. Yeah, I mean, it was, there was a lot of uh, energy, <laughs> some type of Good energy, word. you know, with, with our teams, you know. Oakley and Tyrone Hill had an ongoing beef that whole year. He owed him money. That's why he kept smacking him every year. And before the playoffs started, Tyrone Hill paid his debt. So it wasn't any, because Oakley smacked him every time he saw him until he paid him his money. <laughs> so game seven of this series, there are basketball fans, not only in Toronto, but all across the country remember exactly where they were. What was that day in the lead up to that game like for you? It was, I've never experienced anything that intense. This was just something where you just understood every possession meant the world, and you took it like that. 
and one possession in particular uh, meant the world for sure. <laughs> Sixers by one, but the Raptors with the ball. Two seconds to go. Hey, I wanted the ball. I remember we were going into timeout. I said, Coach, give me the ball. They've got Del Curry inbounding the ball. They're going to set screens for Vince Carter coming to it. Originally, the play, I was supposed to catch the ball at the top of the key, and he denied me. <laughs> Curry has it. Carter trying to get free. So I go back door to get the ball, and as I turn around, Tyrone Hill was there. As I pump fake and I, I got myself set, and I go back up. Carter at the buzzer. About halfway, I was like thinking, okay, oh, that's good. Oh, no, that's long. Oh, no. No go. And the Sixers hold on and advance to the conference finals. At that moment, was there anything in your head? Is there, you allow yourself to say, wow, this, this was the chance. This was our opportunity. Was there any of that kind of feeling like, is this the window that we missed? When now it is. Now. Now yeah. you think about it. Back then, you're like, I can't wait till next year. Mm -hmm. It was one of those things like, we're next. Like, this is going to be our opportunity, and it never comes. And you hear people say it. You got to cherish the moment because you never know if you get the opportunity again. That was real talk because we never even got anywhere close to this opportunity again. So certainly that ball in the air is the, uh, if not still, it was for a long time the seminal moment in Raptors history. And what if this had happened? to the franchise's first ever Eastern Conference Finals. <laughs> what do you think making that shot would have would have done? The fall of the team, it came from many things. I don't think the fall of the team came from us losing that game, because I think that actually catapulted us to a per, to mm -hmm. a point where people believe, and I think that's why people sign and re-sign back and stuff like that. If that shot would have went in, we would have had a very, very good chance to, to advance to that finals.